My name is Cecilia Hidalgo. I was born Hialeah, Miami, and I'm 20 years old. The abusive situation I was born into was very difficult. I had to witness a lot of things, such as when my father would come home, he'd be angry because dinner wasn't prepared on time. He would get mad and throw things. Um, he's taking knives to my mother's throat. When I was three years old, my mother finally left my father and we were wandering for a while in Miami um, without a place to live. For about three years, after from three to six, I, we were homeless. And by the time I hit, was six years old and started school, my mother found an apartment. And that's when my mother moved in with another boyfriend. And he early started abu sexually abusing me and took my virginity. And he was doing that for, from when I was 12 to when I was 14. When I had my baby, I was 16 years old. At the time, I was selling drugs, and I was heavily with it. And it came to a point where I stopped. And it came to a point that I was homeless, and I had no choice but to give into what the Lord was calling me to do, and that was to give my child to my adopted parents. My name is Chris McGarry. I'm uh, 19 years old. The first place I came into was a shelter with uh, 15 other uh, boys that were there. and uh, So I, I moved down here with an aunt, an aunt at 14. She was, she was married at the time, and. Um, not too shortly after that, I guess they were having a lot of problems. She divorced, and it was just moving into that. It just was more fighting and more, you know. It was moving into a situation that really wasn't any better. You know, I was still pretty crushed by my dad dying, and um, when I when I came down here, I uh, started doing drugs and drinking a lot, and. Um, Nobody was really there to tell me not to at all. It got to a point where she used a baseball bat to, because she was upset, and uh, started hitting me with a baseball bat and chasing me around her front yard with a baseball bat. And somebody called the cops, and I mean that's when I they came and assessed the situation or whatever, and that's when I went to foster care. I discovered four kids. Um, being that I was 18, I was about to uh, age out of the foster care program. I just was leaving one of the um, foster homes I was in and basically said, okay, your birthday's on the 27th, so on the 28th, I want you to find a place to go. Tom, um, the RA there, he immediately offered me something to eat, um, just talking to him. and. Uh, Having him actually listen to what I was saying, and but just actually sitting down with me and just listening to everything I had to say so intently, it was a lot. You know, it was a love. He just wanted, he wanted to know about me. He wanted to figure out about me. He wanted to. First thing he wanted to ask, okay, do you have a job? If not, we're gonna go help you. This and that, and uh, it was just constantly, okay, what can we do? What can I do for you now? What can, what, how can I, you know? What can I do for you? How can I, what can I give you? And I didn't even see it at the time how what he was doing like for me and with me and, and my rebelliousness of just trying so hard to, you know, resist the fact that he actually did want something good for me. From age five through age 18, I've been through 50 fossil homes. Well, I, I mean, even though my dad was in a sense abusive, he was, he was everything to me at that time. He was, he was everything I wanted to be like. Um, and I thought my mom, who I guess in a sense was trying to protect me from my father, because she didn't want me to be like that. I thought she was, she was crazy for doing that. And I, and I, you know, at times I was in a sense abusive to my own mother. I hate her, told her I hate her, because I wanted my father. I, I remember, I remember my, my, my mom used to pray for me. And so like, I remember, uh, I didn't really know who God was, but I remember, uh, I remember my mom was scared watching her pray. When I came to school, I, I came to school really scarred up. 
but had to have little cracks in it. And then the school called her to a social worker or HRS, and they uh, came to my house and kind of observed that, looked at the house, saw that there was really no food in the kitchen, so that we had, we live with more insects, like bugs, than there was people in the house, and that you know we didn't really have mattresses to sleep on. I hated people, and I hated, definitely hated males. You know, and I, as a kid, you know, I, I didn't like males. I I, uh, I always felt uncomfortable around males. I always wanted females to be more around me. But when I was 15, I went to an adoption gathering, and there I was introduced to Pastor Doug Sauters. And I remember uh, Pastor Doug came to me, said, hey, how you doing? You're enjoying yourself. I look at him like, uh, well, I don't know, these, these things, I was like, nah, not really. I mean, these things happen all the time. You know, just, just go on with the flow. And he goes, um, so are you looking forward to getting adopted? I go, I said to him, yeah, right, who's gonna adopt me? It's all a bunch of lies, people just say things that don't really mean it. And so he was trying to talk to me, but I was kind of avoiding him, like, please stop talking to me about this, I don't hear it. I already know what this is about. And then he, um, asked me to play basketball with him. And, and I remember winning that game. But then again, now that I think about it, I, now that I play Pastor Doug in basketball, I see how good he is. So I, saw, I, saw, I think that he took an easy on me. <laughs> yeah, he took an easy on me. And it wasn't until I was 18 years old and I aged out of the system that, um, that I went to a place called the Covenant House. And the Covenant House is a place where kids who are homeless have nowhere to go end up or can go for some shelter. And, and from there, I met a man by the name of Pastor Lee Hawkins who heard about me through a woman that worked with Camelot Community Care who, in a sense, Pastor Lee was running the Four Kids Independent Living Program. And I entered to four kids in the pillar program. I was a mess. I was bitter. I was angry. And I was 18. So I'm seeing people, not just people in my community, but people not even my community, or that, sh you know, that we live different levels of lifestyles, but they care for me. And so in a sense, it, it really encouraged me and allowed me to see the world differently allowed me to, to break those walls that I had, to just tear them down, tear them down, tear them down, tear them down, because God is gonna be, gonna, gonna be doing some great things in my life. And these people he's putting there to teach me the things I need to know to become a better man. And from that, for, for their help, I now help kids that went through things I went through. Um, if I didn't have these people in my life, I would become the statistic that everyone had told me that I would be. I would become the jailmate. I would become the maybe kid that would die at 23. I would, I would, be, I would, I would have became these things if it wasn't for these people that saw something in me and fought for me and believed it in me. And for that, I'm thankful. And, and, I, and, and most, I, I can't even forget the most important one, uh, Christ. Jesus, um, where I thought he wasn't listening, he was building a master plan, a vision that I couldn't, wouldn't be able to handle if he showed it to me any earlier. But now that I'm in the midst of it, in the middle of it, I can totally see such a wonderful master plan that he's doing in my life. And I'm just so humble, so, so happy about it. And I just can't wait to see more of the outcome of it.